been a disastrous start to the season. Today's sacking of Ronald Koeman has been welcomed. The board decided to act now. Yeah, I worry about that. The manner at which Everton have lost games, the signs didn't look good. I think it was inevitable because the results haven't been great. I think given the performance, it's not really surprising. Six matches without a win. The search begins for a new manager. Hey guys, how's it going? Masterbox here, and yes, the new career mode team that we will be doing in FIFA 18 is going to be with Everton. I had no doubts in my mind that when I was going to set up the second career mode that we're going to run simultaneously with the Arsenal career mode, that I had to do Everton. After spending all that cash in the previous transfer window, after bringing in so many players and making so many moves, losing Lukaku and all that, you thought that they were going to have a smashing season, that finally, maybe they'd be able to get out of that seventh placed hell that they've always constantly found themselves in. Finally, take the next step and maybe see themselves in the top six. But it could not be further from the truth. They've had an awful start so far. They are more closer to the relegation spot than they are to any top six place. They seriously need to get back on track. They have sacked Ronald Koeman, there is a vacancy, and I have filled that vacancy. So allow me to get things started. This is my first ever career mode with Everton, and I'm pumped to get it going. And this is the starting 11 that I've assembled. I've changed the formation a little bit. It's a 4-2-3-1 formation with CDMs and center attack and midfielders. Pickford is in goal. As you can see, the back four consists of Leighton Baines, Ashley Williams, Michael Keane, and Seamus Coleman. The two CDMs include both Gay and Schneiderlin, and then the center attack and midfielders. I have got three of them. We've got Sig uh, Sigurdsson out on the left central attacking midfield position. We've got Rooney, Moore sitting behind the striker, as you can see there in the central attacking midfield spot. And Ross Barkley is at center attacking midfield as well on the right-hand side. The reason I've gone with Barkley on the right-hand side is, as you can see, he can play right mid and right wing. So he's maybe better suited for that position as well. And then Sig uh, Sigurdsson can also play at left midfield. So I figure he's probably better suited to the left as well. And then the striker is Sandro, which we haven't seen an awful lot of from ever. And I don't know if he's injured or not, but I've got him up for it at the moment. He is the highest rated striker that they have. Relatively young as well, only 21 years of age. So he can grow and get better. And he's got a pretty good potential. The only thing is that he's five foot nine, and you don't normally think of a guy that's that tall being a lone striker, being the best fit, really. So I may be potentially going to be doing something about that striker position. The substitutes that I've got as well, Phil Jagielka, although he is getting on a little bit. So who knows, Garbert, um, Garbert Holgate. Klaassen, who's another uh, transfer for them, McCarthy, Balassi, and Nias. They're the guys that I've got on the bench. And just taking a look at the reserves too, I mean, we know that Everton have got some great young up-and-coming players. I mean, even some of the lower-rated guys that are getting a lot, a lot of game time in the Premier League, like Kenny and like... Uh, a few others as well. Adam Ole Lookman we see a little bit of. Maybe not so much Tom Davies these days. Calvert-Lewin is definitely a big one up there as well. I want to be training up all of those guys. Get them to a decent overall. And then maybe you'll be seeing a little bit more of them. Scrolling through the shortlist. We've got a couple of nice center back options. Because uh, the defense is quite old. The starting 11 defense anyway for Everton. So I'd like to bring in a new center back. Maybe a new left back. We've got Tierney and uh, Sesson Young as well. Two left backs I really like the look of there. Charlie Masonda, a right mid that can play on both sides as well. I like the look of him. Kaita, I'm thinking maybe we could steal him from Liverpool before he goes there. I don't know. And if not Kaita, maybe Emre Chan. I don't know. I'll play if we can get on pre-contract. Phil Fodden, Aua, and uh, Fosberg, Diaz, a bunch of other younger players that maybe we can bring in and build up. And then Batchway. Now, let me talk a little bit about this man. Now, here's my logic, okay? A tall, physically dominant striker from Belgium that plays for Chelsea and is relatively young. Now, the last guy that Everton bought from Chelsea that had those attributes and had that nationality, he was okay for them. His name was Romelu Lukaku. Could Michi Batshuayi be a Romelu Lukaku 2.0 for us, for Everton? Could we bring him in and could he maybe try to replicate the same sort of success that Lukaku had? I don't know, but I might potentially look at signing him if I don't just decide to maybe one day bring Lukaku back just because. These are two the board expectations, just taking a quick look at the overview. They want me to win the Europa League. They've been knocked out of it already in uh, in real life. So, I mean, you're asking me to win that competition. Okay, then. You've also got me wanting to win the F, or not win the FA Cup, but at least get to Wembley, get to a semi-final. Uh, we'll see how we go in that one. And then for the Premier League, finish in not just the top six, not crack into there, but finish in a Champions League place. So, we'll see if we can pull that off. I'm not too sure about that. 
And I, I, I genuinely do not know if that will be a possibility, okay? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love to have immediate success straight away, but top four if for Everton, that's a hell of a run. And yeah, I've pretty much covered everything that I need to to start this career mode off. The last thing probably will be the training. I've got five different players getting drills here. Calvert-Lewin, Davies, Holgate, Lookman, and Pickford. They're all going to get drills for now. They're the guys that I see like younger players with lower overalls at the moment that once we build up their overalls, we'll get them in the team and they could be like the future starting 11 or a good chunk of the future starting 11, as you can see, minus obviously Pickford, who is going to be pretty much our goalkeeper for the entire thing. Cool then, I think I've pretty much covered everything and we are now advancing and getting underway with this little pre-season tournament that we've got going on, Milan coming up, like I always do. I'm going to sim every single game except for the final if we make it. I also don't want to take any risks with injuries or anything like that, and so I am just going to be straight away uh, pretty much simulating with my second team, as you can see some of the names that are in there. But skipping ahead, a 1-1 draw. They got a goal with Andre Silva, but we scored first with Morales. I'm also not really going to go for any players myself, not for at least the first couple of weeks. I want to scout up the players I have in my shortlist, have all their stats, all the information on them, and then go for them. But for now, we have got a transfer offer for Leighton Baines, 13 million for Swansea City, and then a transfer offer for Seamus Coleman, 12 million from, of all people, the team that we just played in Milan. Look, if I was to try to sell either of these players, it wouldn't be Seamus Coleman. It would honestly probably be Leighton Baines, 32 years of age. I expect him to start going down in overall as the season progresses, but He's late in Baines. It's an Everton career, mate. I can't get rid of him straight away. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say no. There are certain players that just cannot get sold, like, off the... Like, I'm going to lose pretty much all the Everton fans watching this if I sell Leighton Baines within five minutes of the career mode. So yeah, we'll reject the offer for Leighton Baines and Seamus Coleman, no, I do want to keep him as well, so we'll reject that too. And bring on the next game then, which appears to be against Montpellier. Away, we will see how we go. Immediately conceding, which isn't great, but now we skip ahead. 2-1 win, although, or 2-1 loss, should I say. 2-1 win for Montpellier. They picked up an injury though, so now what does that mean? We are one point from our first two games in the group stage. I almost always go through in the group stage. This time, it appears I'm not going to, unless we win our next game. Yeah, we, we need to win our next game and other results go our way. And the team that we're playing next is only the team that has topped our group so far. It does not look too good for Everton right now. We need to get a win, and we need it badly. And we get a huge win as well. 4-1, that could almost help us out on goal difference if it comes down to that. But wow, we will see how things go. We've got Bessage. Morales, Calvert-Lewin, and Balassi coming off the bench, getting a 4-1 win. That's mental. And we did so well in that last game that we have actually managed to go through to the semifinals after all. Porto is the semifinal. Again, I'm simming it. If we make it to the final, I'm playing that game. All right, Porto versus Everton. It's an away simulated game, which makes me nervous, but we'll skip ahead. What a pumping. Absolute murder. Wow, 4 0 loss to Porto. Now a transfer offer for Ross Barkley, 21.5 million. Are we going to be able to get a decent amount for him? It's Man City knocking on our door, so we could get a fair bit for him. The man has a 51.3 million dollar release clause. His value is 26, which means that what they've offered us, Man City, is a fucking joke. It's way below our value, or it's way below his value. So no, I'm not even going to bother. If if someone wants to get him for 51.3 million, his release clause. I mean, yeah, sure, I know I'm tempting fate here, and I'm probably going to have to get that email at some point saying Ross Barkley has been bought for 51.3. Someone's activated his release clause, but you know what? I'm cool to just say no to this one and let bygones be bygones. One thing I might do, actually, because now that I remember, I will go through and take a look and see who else in this Everton team has release clauses apart from Ross Barkley. We've got Sandro with a 31.5. That's over, like double his value. That's I feel like if, if, if a release clause is double a player's value, then I kind of don't worry about it too much. But if it's cutting it pretty close to their actual value, then I definitely have to do something about it. So I'll continue on and see if anyone else pops up like Coleman. 24.7. Again, it's uh, pretty close to that, you know, just underneath that double mark. Either way, still moving on. Luke Garbutt with like less than a $5 million release clause, but I definitely probably have to do something about that. So I'm probably going to just go through and adjust that and get rid of his release clause. And I'm not even going to, like, I don't even I don't even bother like that much. You know what? A slight increase to his wage, whatever. It's it's good for both parties, really. We, we get rid of a fucking shit release clause, a stupid release clause that I would never give. And yeah, now we get to Keith Garber and we know that we've locked him in. Looking through pretty much everyone else down the bottom as well, there's no other release clauses that scare me too much. So the ones that are there don't concern me too much and I feel like that's pretty much it. 
A transfer offer for Phil Jagielka. Now, I feel like I have won some brownie points with Everton fans for not selling Leighton Baines. I'm probably going to maybe lose some of those points, but I feel like it's still okay because I've kept Baines around, but Jagielka is like nearly 35 years old, people. I have to try to get something for him while he's still here and not just completely tanked with his overall. I feel like if I delegated this to my assistant manager only because it's like you know, Manchester United, and don't sell the player for any less than, you know, just five points. Yeah, that's fine. I reckon we can get just a little bit to add to, of course, the uh, to the budget. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Oh, I said that this would, I fucking said that this would happen, didn't I? Seamus Coleman, let's see. Uh, Leverkusen, he's been a popular boy, Seamus Coleman. Uh, $24.7 million release clause has been activated, and now... I need to not just get a bloody new left back for the aging Leighton Baines. I now need a right back. And we have confirmation now that Seamus Coleman has left. They did agree to terms Leverkusen. So there you go. He's going to buy Leverkusen. We only get $20.5 million from the, uh, from the, of course, the triggered uh, release clause of $24.7 million. Okay then. So that's about $20 million plus the budget we already have now to sign a new right back. Another player I am pretty keen to let go is also Aaron Lennon. And uh, I... Still want to get a decent amount for him if possible. I mean, his value is $8 million. Apparently, I could only get a little over $8 million, says my chief executive. So I'll delegate that one as well and maybe hopefully try to get... I'll start it off at a $10 million offer. And so then, I have got a good selection of right backs here that uh, my scouts have been able to find me. I think it's around about 20 or so. I'm going to go through because, again, I'm looking at this for the first time and see who the best player I think there is available at the moment. And here are three right backs that I found in that little selection that have interested me and in maybe potentially signing with. Victor Moses first, uh, a right wing back slash right midfielder who I'm still fine with playing at just the regular right back spot. He should be okay for us there. Kieran Trippier is actually away on loan to Girona FC, which I do not get because I would love to have had him at Everton. If they're just going to loan him away, fuck, I would have bought him straight up from Tottenham. That would have been sensational. And the other one is uh, Dribble City Bay. And I think, if possible, he would be my number one pick because I think he's the actual best right-back option for us to get. Can also play at left-back, which I do appreciate as well. So it's probably CD Bay first and then Moses second. Trippy, I would have loved to have got as well, but the fact that he's loaned away, I can't get him. He might be another potential option to get later on. I am scouting those players for the time being though, which means for the next week or two, we could probably go with just Holgate or maybe even Cuco Martino, who is also a right-back that we have there. That's basically the same overall. So... He will be a little bit of a standout weakness, but I, I don't mind. I think we can manage with Holgate at right back. The strongest starting 11 team that I have is out there, apart from, obviously, minus Seamus Coleman. And the first game of the Premier League season, Everton versus Stoke City. Let's go for it. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, then. It's a brand new career mode, a brand new career mode team. Everton did get off to a win to start off their Premier League season, but... We all know it slowly unraveled as things went on. We're going to hopefully get off to just as good a start, but keep the consistency going. And again, we are expected to apparently finish in a Champions League spot. I'm not sure about that, but we're definitely going to have to do much, much better than Everton have in real life. And taking a look at our opponents, that Stoke City team playing that five at the back formation. Shakiri, the danger man, Chupo Motting's been okay this season, but here we go. A kicking off a brand new Premier League season and a brand new career mode underway. I'll be interested to see how I get on with this formation as well, because it's not really a formation I've run an awful lot in the past, but it might open up for us here as Rooney takes a bit of a poor touch and loses possession. Yeah, good, good, good. The cross now. He's offside there, Schneidel, and in a really bizarre position for a centre defensive midfielder to be in, and obviously he's wanted a bit too far. Fuck, he's in. Oh my god, I couldn't tell. I could not tell. For the first 15 minutes, I thought we had been dominant. The first attack they get, they'll score from. I kind of thought this was going on target. How didn't it? Really? Sandro. Powerful shot. And Peter stops it from going out. I swear this Stoke City team, are do they're doing about as good as they can. Trying to open up things here. Rooney, just get there first, please. Rooney, maybe now. Rooney, maybe now. Saved by Butlin. I saw it open up. Barkley. And up the middle again. Sen. Sensational football. Up the middle. And Wayne Rooney gets the first goal of the Everton career mode. Had to be him, didn't it? Oh, yeah. We're going to need a replay there. Look, just the one. Just in a straight line, too. Sandro not even looking. The finish isn't 
the best in the world, but it's enough. It's just lofted over the keeper's legs. Very close to getting stopped there, Butland. But Rooney beats him. He scores the first goal just like he did in the first game of the season. 39th minute. Here we go, boys. That's what I'm talking about. Good cross. I would like to keep it on the deck if possible. Man, the sharp turn from fucking... Uh, and the pass is... Oh, my God. I did not expect... Is that Zuma? Zuma stuck to him like it was nothing. The change of pace, the turn, did not lose a step there. Fucking hell. I thought I was going to be able to get a chance to get a shot at goal there. Zuma just stuck in front like a fucking pest. Well, not too much to get upset about there in that first half. We lead with a Rooney goal. Literally just passed it straight up the middle. It was great. Schneiderlin. It's a clean tackle. I thought it was even going to be a foul. Bloody hell. And to the left, and to the left again. Beautiful stuff. Don't tell me I've overhit that one. I haven't. And Ross Barkley will make it 2-0. There we go. He's a little out of favor right now in the Everton team. I'm not exactly sure of the story behind it. Might not be an Evertonian for much longer. Who knows? But he scored on this one. I just, how? How did they allow so much space on that right side? Look. And again, just struck it past Bar Barkley with pace. Bottom left-hand corner. Coming across his body, but he still gets good contact. The five at the back defense of Stoke City has fallen apart. I mean, they've got five defenders, and they're only interested in really just defending one side of the pitch. Deflection. Run to it first. You're not going to get there, are you? Yeah, I didn't think so. Cameron's going to keep the attack going. Diouf, I just bloody tried to line him up there. Not even, not even going to hide it. Stay in front of him. Oh, my God. A little bit of Shakiri with a shocking miss. Mate, it was almost the exact same thing. We scored our second goal because... We just weren't interested in defending the other side of the pitch. It nearly happened to us. Pass. And again, off to the right. Sandro, what footwork. And he has fired that one past Butland. No stopping that one. I said there was a third goal coming. And Sandro gets it. Good tackle from Schneiderlin. Buddy, Schneiderlin and Garner Gay have been absolutely sensational. Speaking of him, he's got space up the middle. I'm going to try a sharp turn. Oh, not great. It could still fall to him. Garner Gay. Oh, saved by Butland. And I've run out of... I literally thought that was going out for a goal or for a corner. And in the end, I just ran into it with fucking class. Oh, no. Guys, the marking not good enough. Crossed across the face of goal. Shakiri of all people, had to be there for Stoke City to tap at home. You know what? It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a... Bad. It's not a great finish to this game, but who cares? It's a 3-1 victory. I'm fortunate to give up the clean sheet, but we are getting a solid 3-1 win to start our season, and I'm very happy with that. How crazy is it, too, that, of course, Rooney had to get the first goal of the season as well. It wasn't exactly crossed in and a beautiful header or anything, but it was the first goal of Everton season scored by Wayne Rooney. And look, we actually sit very pretty at the top of the table right now. Awesome, awesome stuff. Let's get a bit more training. We'll advance to the next game, which is actually against Man City. So that's going to be a blockbuster game. And we'll probably leave it there for this episode. So the first episode with Everton is done. A brand new career mode underway. We'll get through this first season with Everton. Hopefully have a much better first season in this career mode than Everton are having in real life. We'll be switching back to the Arsenal career mode at the end of this season and then back and forth, back and forth until we then eventually pick a brand new team to do. That's how it's going to work for here on out. But thank you for watching the first episode of the Everton career mode, guys. Many more coming soon. Again, I know I did take quite a fair break off of YouTube for a little bit because of the fact that I was sick and I couldn't really record or edit any videos at all, but I feel like hopefully I will have gotten back on track by now. I've uploaded quite a fair few videos in a row. I'm hoping that's the case, and hopefully we can continue to just smash it in the future. I won't have to worry about getting sick, and I can just focus on making great videos for you guys to enjoy. Until next time, my name is Masterbucks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a good one.